What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today, as well as some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching to finish off this week and heading on to the rest of this month. But before we do do that, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box and I challenge you guys in this video to get this video to 50 likes. I posted a pinned comment in the video yesterday to see if we can get that one to 50 likes. We got about 45 likes on yesterday's video so let's see if we can crack 50 likes on this video so smash that like button and let's get started with today's video. So Guys, today was yet again another green day in the overall stock market. The Dow Jones was up around 122 points, up around 0.5%. The NASDAQ was up around, I believe, 30 points on the day at the close because remember, this is the future, so that's why it's a little bit lower. But I do believe it closed around up $30 today, up around 0.4%. And the S&P 500 closed the day up around around 11.68% up or, or rather dollars up around 0.45 percent. So let's talk about, you know, what is going on in the major indices, guys? What are these trends telling us? We're going to take a look at some different time frames so we can plan our trades accordingly. And let's just get right into it, guys. So on this 180-day, four-hour chart, we've seen a clear recovery from the low point at around 21,700 from that bloody December that we did have in the markets, guys. If you don't recall that, um, you know, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, they were all down around 15 to 18% in the month of December. And pretty much from the point where they hit their lows, I believe this was the day after Christmas, they've been up, you know, a pretty solid amount, I think around 10% from this bottoming out point. And let's see, it wasn't the day after Christmas. Yeah, it seems like it was the day after Christmas. And we can see, you know, we're up nearly 10% in the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ are right around that same range from the lows that we saw, you know, towards the end of December. And I think today marked the 12th day in a row that we've been recovering, you know, from that bottoming out point. So what I want to keep an eye on, guys, and what I want you all to keep an eye on is this next resistance that we're that we're facing here on the Dow Jones, which is a pretty strong resistance at around 24,200 to around 24,500, guys. If we can see, you know, back in June, we sold off all the way down to 24,200, and then back towards the end of October, we bottomed out at around $24,500. So this range right here is going to be a very interesting spot for the Dow Jones. Are we going to get rejected here? and then start to go on a downtrend? Are we going to break out of here and test the next resistance at the 180 SMA? You know, obviously only time will tell, but I personally think, like I've been saying over the past couple of videos, that we're going to pull back in the overall markets. And when we do pull back, it's going to be a pretty strong pullback because if we're judging on previous events, I know obviously, you know, past performance doesn't dictate future performance, but, you know, sometimes you do have to look at some previous trends to get an idea of what could possibly happen. And if we're looking at these previous trends from a couple weeks back, you know, every time that we recovered in the Dow, we've been beaten down to a lower low after that, right? We can see we recovered here a pretty good amount, got beaten down to a lower low, recovered here a pretty solid amount, got beaten down even harder, and we've been recovering for, like I said, around 11, 12 days now 
on the Dow Jones. So I expect a pretty strong push down, whether that, you know, it's around here at the resistance, or if we do break above here, it could be at the 180 SMA resistance right around, let's say mid 24,000 level, maybe 24,750. That is my price target roughly for the rejection of the Dow Jones if we break out of here. And obviously, guys, if we start to see some resistance right around here and we start to get rejected, you know, 24,200 in that case is going to be a uh, resistance for the Dow Jones. But if we take a look a little bit closer here, this higher high, higher low pattern on the 20 day chart is 100% still intact, guys. You know, from this low at 21,700, we made another low at around 22,300, which was higher than the previous, made another low at around 22,600, again, higher than the previous. And now we're starting to see, you know, a little bit of a double top action until, you know, I think. Actually, I think we were starting to see a double top here, but then towards the end of the day today, we actually cracked $24,000 pushing us to slightly a higher high from this previous high here. So, you know, up until this point, guys, you know, I was thinking that this could be a potential double top, but the fact that we broke a little bit out of that, you know, this could be the continuation of that uptrend, which is really putting that 24,200 resistance, you know, even more you know, even more important in, in terms of a resistance level, right? So let's see tomorrow, guys, you know, if we do pull back tomorrow and start to head towards the 180 and 50 SMAs, and if we break this trend line here, that's going to be a very good sign of a potential reversal to the downside in terms of the Dow Jones. And in yesterday's video, I was talking about this 30-day 180 SMA resistance. It seems like we're slowly breaking out of that one as well. So, you know, in terms of these technicals right now, guys, you know, it is pointing to another green day tomorrow because, again, we're breaking out of that double top action on this 20 day chart here. We're slowly breaking out of that resistance at around 24K. Again, I said we cracked 24K today, you know, in the Dow Jones. So, you know, all the signs right now are pointing to another green day tomorrow, but ultimately, guys, I do expect that we're going to get rejected and have a pretty strong rejection, and it's just coming down to, you know, one of these upcoming days, guys, because, you know, we are getting extended on the RSI on this longer-term chart, and like I said, guys, We've been in this reversal to the upside for around almost two weeks now, you know, two full trading day weeks, meaning that, you know, that's five days plus five days and then a couple more days in the third week. So technically like three full weeks, you know, almost three full weeks in this reversal pattern to the upside. So I do expect a pretty strong pullback coming very soon. So on the NASDAQ composite, guys, we broke the 180 SMA resistance, and now it's acting as a support level, which is a pretty good sign that, you know, this one is reversing to the upside as well. But don't let this fool you guys, because overall, you know, it's pretty obvious that, you know, this one's clearly still you know, downtrending in price, making lower lows, making lower highs over the past couple of months. So we've seen this one crack the 180 SMA before in this particular time period. I think this was in the beginning of December. But again, you know, after that, it made an, a lower low again. So the fact that we're breaking above this level here, you know, doesn't mean much because we did do it in the past. But, you know, we're still technically at the top of this um, downwards trending trend line pattern here that I do have drawn out and we are getting to the overbought side in terms of the NASDAQ. So guys, you know, we're in very critical levels right now. We're in very interesting spots across the entire market. And, um, you know, what to keep an eye on in the NASDAQ, the fact that we did bounce on the 180 SMA as a support level. Now we're testing the resistance from earlier yesterday, I believe, right at around 66.30. You know, what I would like to see is either a rejection to the downside 
or a break out of this to see if the uptrend is going to continue. And if we do break out of that, you know, that's going to be putting us above the trend line here, this downwards trending channel trend line that I have drawn out for you guys. And, you know, that could be a reversal pattern to the upside. But again, you know, I don't really think we're going to be shooting up, you know, very heavily in terms of the NASDAQ or any index that, you know, that may be. Um, because, guys, there's a lot of bad news out there. You know, we've been been getting some good news that's been bringing some optimism but I do think this is going to be short-lived and we are going to get a pullback a strong pullback you know in the entire markets one of these coming days I'm just waiting very patiently for it so the S&P 500 guys this one broke the 50 SMA resistance and just like the Nasdaq just like the Dow this one is holding the uptrending pattern on the 20-day chart very nicely it was almost double topping here but we broke out of that resistance at around 2590 and we cracked did we crack 2600 today we might have we were very close actually to cracking 2600 but in terms of the 20 day chart guys we're making higher highs making higher lows and if we want to see a downwards trending pattern, we're going to want to see a break below the 180, the 50 SMA, and this trend line that I have drawn out here. Might as well just extend it a little bit more, right? So, you know, if we break this trend line to the downside and maybe get to around 2,500 flat and then eventually get to 2,450, that is going to be a very good reversal pattern to the downside, you know, for the S&P 500. So let's quickly talk about what I traded today because I don't actually have a lot of time more time to record this video I'm kind of on a time crunch right now I have to actually head head out of my house in about 15 minutes so let's see if we can get this done in 15 minutes so what I traded today guys believe it or not was TVIX and this was a very quick trade early on in the day I made around 1.75 percent profit on this trade and for those of you guys that don't know TVIX is an ETF that goes up when the markets are selling off. So you might be asking yourself now, how did you trade this if the markets were green on the day? Well, you know, we had a little pullback in the overall markets earlier on today. It was very short-lived, guys. We, you know, we headed back into the green. I believe it was towards the middle of the day, but we can see it. <coughs> excuse me, we can see that this pop right here in the morning is where, you know, I was able to make my trade in TVIX and I was literally done today trading within 30 minutes of the market. So, you know, TVIX tracks closely to the S&P 500. So this gap down in the S&P 500, and we could actually use the SPY here so we can see some pre-market movement. And the SPY tracks the S&P 500. It's an ETF for the S&P 500, as we can see here. So we can see, you know, this one was downtrending pretty much the entire uh, pre-market today. And this is what opened up my eyes to potentially trading um, TVIX. So we were downtrending, getting rejected rejected by the 180 SMA and then we slowly started to push down very quickly towards the beginning of the day and that obviously pushed up TVIX as well and that's where I was able to you know grab my 1.75% on TVIX and we can see that here from 5560 I believe I got in at actually at around 5575 I got about 1.75 and the reason why I sold off right at around 5675 is because we were reaching that resistance in TVIX I believe this was um let's see this one was from 4 a.m. this morning. We had a resistance at 56.75. We gapped down pretty much, opening up that margin of profit. It wasn't really big of a margin. It was around 3%, but this was another typical gap down trade. We filled the gap. I was able to profit on some of it, and I sold off here because we were reaching that resistance from 4 a.m. So that's very, very simple, guys. That is where I made my trade today in TVIX, and from there, guys, Guys, we peaked at $57, and that's when the market pretty much started to head into the green territory 
for the rest of the day. So that's what I did today in terms of my trading, guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you did in terms of your trading. And let's go through some stocks, ETFs, rapid fire right now because I have to head out of my house in literally 10 minutes from now. So let's see if we can do this very quickly. So Enbev, Cron, I think Cron was actually a very strong mover today. And for those of you guys that don't know, actually not today, it's been a very strong mover over the past couple of days. And I actually called this one out, guys. If you remember, I called this one out at the $11, $12 range. I believe, was it the $10 range? It was right around like $10, $11, $12 is where I called it out on this bottoming out point. Because at this point, guys... We started to see a slow cup pattern start to form a higher low from the previous. And then we started to head back into the $13 range like I did predict. And I still think there is some room to run potentially up to $13.75, maybe $14 in terms of cron. But, you know... We'll see, obviously, pre-market hours, what's going on with Cron, but let's say it does end up pushing down. This could potentially be a good put option trade for Cron in the next coming days, and let me quickly explain why. So the fact that we're getting closer to this resistance at around $14, guys, we could be potentially getting rejected there, right? We are seeing we're a little bit overbought, so if we do end up popping up tomorrow, maybe another 50 75 cents which i do believe is possible because the marijuana stocks have been on fire recently we could end up getting rejected there especially since at that point the rsi is going to be even more overbought and at that point guys it could be a good you know a potential put play in my personal opinion let me know what you guys think about that i would love to know another marijuana stock that's been doing very well is cgc guys canopy growth company this one was up around 12% today. We found a bottom here at around $25. This support here in Canopy Growth in the past couple of days have just been absolutely amazing. From $25 all the way up to $37, we've been able to make a nice 32% move in Canopy Growth Company. So let me know down below, guys. Did you trade Canopy Growth? I would love to love to know. So another one that I'm watching for tomorrow is going to be J. JDST, guys. JDST is the bear ETF to gold, meaning whenever gold is going down in price, JDST is going up in price. So why do I see value in JDST? Well, very simple, guys. Gold futures here had a very strong double top at around $1,300, which is a very strong resistance for the gold futures. We can see here, guys, on um, you know the previous support for gold is at around $1,300, and obviously once we broke that, it became a new resistance. So the fact that we're, we're having a lot of trouble getting above that is telling me that we could be potentially pulling back to maybe the mid-1200s again, maybe 1275 right to this 180 SMA line you know that could potentially happen especially if we break 1280 right here so take a look let me just quickly uh erase this drawing set because it is looking pretty sloppy right now let me do it um remove old drawings remove so, okay, nope, that did not do it. Where, where is it? I know it says clear drawing set. That's what I need. So, okay, take a look, guys, very quickly before I end off this video. So, take a look here at this potential triple top. It's actually a triple top, in all honesty, not a double top. It's a triple top. So, we can see, you know, 1,300 roughly got rejected. 1,300 roughly got rejected. 1300 got rejected here again. So this is a triple top, guys. Very bearish pattern. And if we break, you know, 1280, like I said, I'm going to be heavily considering playing, um, you know, JDST for a potential pullback in gold all the way to 1265, 1270. And let's say we start to see, you know, support on this 180 SMA. I'm going to take my money and transfer it into gold, uh, the JNUG, which is the bull ETF. If we do see support and a slow pushback up in terms of gold at this point. So tomorrow, guys, I'm going to be watching for a very close, uh, very closely to see if we break this support. Support because at that point, I'm going to be going long on JDST. So the main ones I'm watching tomorrow, guys, to be quite frank with you all, 
are really JDST. Honestly, that's the number one that I'm watching for tomorrow. I'm obviously going to be watching some other market ETFs like I always do, like, um, you know, TVIX, TQQQ, QQQ. These are all, you know, all potential plays for either direction of the market. So tomorrow, let's say we have a heavy sell-off. I'm going to be playing TVIX again like I did today, although we didn't have a heavy sell-off today. If we have any sell-off in the mornings, right, like, like we did see today, TVIX is a good play. But let's say tomorrow, you know, the markets continue to push up. TQQQ is going to be a very good play, as well as these natural gas-based ETFs, guys. These are in very critical points right now. We've been talking about how natural gas is out of support right now at around two ninety to three dollars. So if this one breaks up into the three ten range, right, you know, out of this fifty SMA resistance, that's going to be a very strong sign for. For you guys going forward, which is the bull ETF to natural gas. So there's just a bunch of, you know, potential out there, in my personal opinion, in these inverse ETFs, these market ETFs, these weed stocks, you know, potentially playing a put on uh, Cron. That's what I'm thinking about for tomorrow and heading on to this next week. So I do apologize that I kind of had to rush this video, guys. I really do apologize. You know, I like taking my time with these videos, but today, you know, I'm on a time restraint, so I really do apologize if the quality isn't as good. But I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And let's see if we can get 50 likes on this video. If we do, you know, I'd be forever grateful if we do get 50 likes on this video. So smash that like button, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Have a great night. I'll see you in the chat tomorrow morning.